<laughs> hey, and welcome back to the podcast, uh, News from the Real World, Session 3. We're joined by... Abby, Caitlin, Patricia, And I'm Andrew. Uh, starting off this session with a discussion about theater and lighthouses. Yeah, so this is an article written by a guy named Robert Schneider. And his whole point is basically that theater was once something that served a valuable purpose, a tangible purpose, and now it is arguably decorative, it's not serving the purpose it once did. That's his argument. And he compares it to lighthouses and that we tend to we tend to think of them in sort of a, a gift shop culture kind of way. Mm -hmm. uh, little pastel uh, pastel colored objects with little gardens on them uh, and like puppies running around them in sunshine and he's saying like that's not what a lighthouse is for. It's if you're in a life or death situation out in the sea. Uh, you need that lighthouse. And all other aids of navigation have failed. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. My, my, yeah. my only thing with, my main, my main argument against this guy's argument is that he's really setting up this us and them sort of Absolutely. dialectic. And yeah. it's, uh, it's right. like, oh, I see lighthouses in this really special way that everybody else just thinks they're little trinkets. I right. don't I know don't, that that's true at I all. I don't think yeah. that is true. And, I, you know, I grew up on, on, a, on a coastline, and everybody that I know um, had at some point, you know, you, even if you just hear the foghorn blowing, you know, you know, in the middle of the night, you, it's not a trinkety kind of thing that you're right. thinking of. It's, right. it's something real. Yeah. It's something that's a pervasive part of your life for whatever reason. Right. Um, right. I didn't really get that that point as far as the lighthouses go. And then the metaphor yeah. to, to move that on to theater. Um, I I don't know. What did you guys buy his argument that people that it's just decorative? I mean, for me, I think it's. I think it's a question of like, are you allowed to decorate something that serves a real purpose? You know, I think that if you, I think yeah. that if there's, if there's a, a lighthouse on a on a shore, it could just as easily be this this monstrous thing that just serves its purpose. But you're allowed to make it pretty if it's gonna be there. Yeah, you know? yeah and I think that that's that. fair to say of theater too. You know, yeah. some people are gonna totally. some people are gonna set up theater because New York expects the Met to put on a show. But if the Met just has people stand on stage and sing. But doesn't yeah. decorate it at all. People Boring. are going to be mad. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a very like Bauhaus mentality where it's like this is what it is. It, it needs to serve its purpose. So a, like a light looks like a light and that's it. And uh, mm -hmm. it sort of is, can't have any fun ever. Yeah. But it's also responding to me to a very specific type of theater. Like he yes. seems to be just talking about, you know, Lord Lord's Sea theaters and Broadway and tour. You know, it's like there yeah. are other kinds of theater that are arguably serving real purpose, which We've never been more connected via the internet, but we've also never been more lonely. So to me, yeah. theater can serve a really important purpose. It's yeah. just maybe not going to see the tour of Forty Second Street. Right, for like you. sleep no more is not a pretty thing to go experience. Right, and so he discounts True. huge areas of theater as though it's like, well, theater is all this and isn't that terrible. It just yeah. it was sort of, I don't know, made me upset a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and speaking of that, uh, our next article uh, is uh, basically a. A biography, a little bit, an uh, in interview with uh, this uh, woman, a CMU alum, actually, uh, Miranda Wright, uh, who is the head of a theater troupe out in Los Angeles called uh, the Los Angeles uh, Performance Practice. Um, and uh, the article, the interview, basically um, doing two things talking about the state of theater in Los Angeles uh, and, and how things are really um, changing there right now. Uh, which I found super interesting because uh, I know theater from the West Coast uh, working in the Bay Area and uh, Los Angeles even to us, well maybe especially to us, was always seen as sort of just a stepping stone um, to film and television in Los Angeles and that uh, even according to Miss Wright has traditionally been the case but um, I guess a lot more experimental work is going on there now that's, that sounds very interesting, or, or not interesting at all, actually. Um, groundbreaking, uh, <laughs> fascinating, um, technologically uh, advanced. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like it's really pushing our society forward. Well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to see the audience demographic is one right. major yeah. thing that I, that I come across. And, and the last article also brought this to me, is, is one thing that that guy didn't mention that is continually uh, a little bit problematic for me is who is coming to see theater anymore? Who can uh, yeah. afford it anymore? Sure. Who yeah. are the sh are the productions, even the new works, designed to speak to? Right. Um, yeah. And it sounded like in LA they're really trying to do some interesting things. Anybody? Yeah, I I have a friend who does uh, like performance art theater, and 
she she was talking to me about it, and I, I have never <coughs> been one to Absolutely. super care about it because it's not my type of thing to work on. But mm -hmm. she, for her, when I was talking to her about it, she was like, you know, it's it's kind of cool. Our friends bring their friends, and then their friends are like, is this what theater's like? And they're like, no, but you should try this if you don't like this. And it kind of opens the door to conversation. Mm -hmm. Not that everybody wants to go to those things or is comfortable with those things, yeah. but it's usually free. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> you know, yeah. usually something that they're like, sure, I'll tell all my friends they're all going. So right. it's kind of nice. Yeah, well, and what is theater? I mean, I think that's kind of a cool thing that she's touching on. She's just sort of trying lots of different things. Yeah, pointing yeah. out that it's not just Broadway musical. Right, which is something that I think he sort of missed. He was talking about demographics yeah. a little bit, but it was in, with a very specific kind of performance where this is sort mm -hmm. of and she's, theater's lots of things. Yeah, and she's mentioning a lot of the, the fact that most of the interesting work in L.A. is not happening in actual theater performance spaces anymore. Right, right. Like that's right. Yeah. Um, right. And it's, you know, it's incumbent upon the audience to find that. Like, it's it's not sure. as easy, you know? It's sure. it's not something that you're going to get a, a mailer for. It's something right. that you yeah. have to seek out. And right. that's, that's, part of, that's part of the draw, I think, yeah. for a lot of people. And interesting, too, the other part of this article I liked was uh, her discussion about technology in performance and oh, yeah. finding yeah. it difficult to not just get pegged as the technology yeah. person, mm -hmm. in, you know, the, the yes. technology performance artist. <laughs> Um, because it is something that she brings into her work a lot. And, you know, I, I struggled with that a little bit, too. In the last session, we talked about LED um, dresses. Yes, dress. Uh, and <laughs> I inherently have, like, a negative reaction to it because like you, I'm amazing. not sure why, like, not right. for any valuable reason. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder how we steer clear of that as, as practitioners. Right. Well, is it useful to do? I think that's one of the things that's tough in theater we want to adopt these new trends or whatever yeah. so we're saying okay well we're going to hire a media designer without figuring out first if we need media at all does it serve the show yeah, yeah. is it helpful and if she's using it as commentary i think that's really valuable and mm -hmm. i think she's trying to point out that yeah i'm trying to use this to serve a purpose but people are just seeing the screens and yeah saying, oh how cool, oh, how cool. Well, yeah that's, not that's it. what she means it's yeah. tough it is tough mm -hmm. um and speaking of relevant uh, theater making, uh, our last article is about uh, a performance uh, of the Trojan women as reimagined by Syrian refugees um, who are currently living in Amman, Jordan, uh, in under refugee status, and they've developed a show based on Trojan women, um, but intermingling their personal experience of loss and war and all the <coughs> same things that are going on in the Greek play. Um, it's been performed in Amman, Jordan, and was slated to come to uh, Georgetown University first and then on to Columbia uh, this, this fall. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they've run up against um, some immigration law. Uh, I can't remember what the law is. It's some stupid number. It was and that they didn't want, they were worried that they would try to stay here. Yeah. Well, it's was because, there? yeah, the, the law specifically states that um, if you're going to come on a work visa, mm -hmm. uh, one of the stipulations is that you have to have a home to which you are planning to return. Yes. So as they are already refugees in Jordan, and they clearly do not have a home, they as far as the U.S. government is concerned, are not uh, are not eligible for a work visa. Right. Yeah. Even though they were leaving like, their small children behind, mm -hmm. so it seems pretty likely they would go home to Jordan. But, but right. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's super sad, I think. Uh, obviously, duh. But um, mm -hmm. it's interesting, too, to me that uh, other countries, uh, I know Great Britain, for example, has a specific type of work visa that is for creative professionals. It's uh, yeah. for artists. It's for... Um, people who are not necessarily like making a job mm -hmm. they're not like going to a job necessarily in mm -hmm. Britain but they're going to be artists and to uh, uh, provide input else, into the yeah. into the cultural right. world of yeah. England yeah. which it seems like we could probably do with here maybe maybe yeah. it's not circumventing this law that's important but right. looking at other ways that people might be able to come here and, and have their voices be heard right, right. It is kind of hard. Because I remember, like, I asked me when I, but we, we never ha actually have a problem kind of like apply. You mean, I mean, like, apply for the visa. Like, coming here is hard already. But then after, uh, and that is mentioned in, in the article too, like, after 9 um, 11. Yeah. And so everything just goes like, harder, and harder and harder and harder. And it's like, not even like about, like, not even like a working visa permit, it's just like, 
student yeah. or like even tourist the process permits, is a lot like, longer, is a lot, more, like more, yeah. a lot, yeah. Especially oh, in this case, yeah. in my opinion, uh, these are voices that uh, Americans need to hear specifically. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of those voices get cut off on purpose a lot of the time. I don't know if there's a. I don't know personally. I don't. I don't know that there's or a, a black ignored. hand. But, but uh, you know, part of the the reality that that these folks are living through is due to our foreign policy. Like there's no yeah. there's no question about that. Um, and yet, you know, when was the last time uh, you know a Baghdad theater troupe came through Washington D.C.? Right. Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be useful? Well, wouldn't it's so be, easy yeah. to think of think of this in terms of an us and them these people are over there, mm -hmm. this yeah. isn't my problem. And when you're faced with people and you realize, we're all just people, we're just children of this universe so together. It's harder to ignore a problem right. with yeah. an actual human with actual stories totally. to And this yeah. standing 20 feet away from Right, right. That's true. Which, does live purpose still serve theater? <laughs> or does live theater still serve purpose? I love to uh, I worked on a show in Berkeley called Nine Parts of Desire, which was a one-woman show produced by a Baghdadi woman um, oh. that was some of the most powerful theater I've yeah. seen in a long time, and uh, I'm not sure if it's if it's in production or if there's any way for people to read it or see it. But um, mm -hmm. it's 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 it was it, it was poignantly uh, the opposite of what's what's happening here, where voices are being shut out. So yeah. write your senators, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's let's get a new law on the books for <laughs> creative immigration. That's my uh, that's my advice for the day. Yeah. Anybody else? No. All right. Good button. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week for the third session of uh, News from the Real World podcast. Until then. Bye. Until then, bye. Bye. Oh. You know, like I said, if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> a ring, I always say. Fiance has to be a podcaster. It's